Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyak Jutani. I'm an intern here at Stanford's internal medicine program. I am also an MD MBA from Yale. And today I'll be going over the high yield tips for step three, literally everything you could ever want to know about this test and probably things that will drastically improve your score. And I highly recommend you kind of stick around for the whole thing because there's so many things here that I wish I had known. And I feel sad that I discovered a lot of this as I was studying and not before I started. So before we start, I just want you to know what step three includes. The TLDR is that I've taken this from their main website, but just know that the general gist is that step three is for anyone in internal medicine slash psychiatry slash surgery slash literally any specialty in first year medicine. And it's intended to gauge your understanding of general medicine. This includes OBGYN, pediatrics, anything and everything. It's specialty agnostic. And what that means is if you are an internal medicine resident, that doesn't mean that you're going to be only getting internal medicine resident questions. You're going to be getting OBGYN, pediatrics, etc., and vice versa. So with that being said, I want to now take you through some of the things I've found. The first format is the fact that this is a two-day exam. The first day has six hours of multiple choice questions. The second day has four and a half hours of multiple choice questions, as well as three to four hours of additional CCS cases. So this is very different from step one and two, which were purely multiple choice questions. Um, step three has multiple choice questions, as well as these things called cases, which are intended to help gauge how well you are able to approach an open-ended complaint that a patient might have. Here's the first day of testing, which as I said, includes six hours of multiple choice. And those six hours are spread across six one hour blocks of 45 questions each. And so what that means is um, you actually are doing, or not 40 questions, 45 questions, 40 questions each. And what that means is each question should take you about one uh, minute and 30 seconds. And you can see that the types of things that are covered on the first day include medical knowledge, um, the diagnosis of patient care with based on history and physical exam, as well as lab values. And then it also includes a bit of practice-based learning. And then on the second day, you're going to have more multiple choice questions, but you'll notice that this, these multiple choice questions are focused more on management. And you'll also see that it's focused more on diagnosis. And then the CCS cases are focused more on, um, as I said, everything from diagnosis to workup to labs and all of those things. This is taken purely from the USMLE website. So you'll see that clearly they're trying to test you specific things and knowing these ahead of time can get you an idea into how well you can do. The general resources that you should use to study for step three include UWorld as well as the ccscases.com. I highly recommend you buy subscriptions for three to six months for both of these, primarily because um, if you're doing this during your intern year, you are not gonna have much time. And what that also means is that you should be studying for this gradually over a longer period of time as well, uh, instead of just taking a certain amount of time off to study for it. Because chances are during intern year, you won't be able to take a full month off to study for this unless you spend your vacation studying for it, which I highly do not recommend. So I'd recommend buying the UWorld subscription as well as the CCS cases. And, um, and this will prepare you for the second day of cases. This one will prepare you for the first day of multiple choice as well as the first part of the second day, which is also multiple choice. And now here are some other resources that I highly recommend you utilize because one, they're free. So that should make them even cooler than these resources, which are not free. And two, they're actually created by the people who make the test. And so obviously they're much more high yield. There's 120 free USMLE step three style based questions available on the website, which I'm going to link below. This includes the questions as well as the answers. And, um, for you all, I think this is particularly useful because it shows you the types of questions that can be asked of you on test day. So these were my first high yield tips for USMLA step three. Now I'm gonna go into the second part of this video, which is all about the unique types of questions that you will see on USMLA step three. And I think this is probably the most useful part of this video because it's gonna really get you specific types of questions that you should see and be ready for. And believe it or not, a lot of these question types are not actually on UWorld. And so it was a little bit of a surprise seeing them on test day, but luckily I had seen this stuff on USMLE's website, so that made me a little bit more prepared for it. So now the specific question types is that based on your world, you'll think that there are only certain types of questions. The first one is that you're gonna have a big vignette about a patient, and then the end will be what's the next step in management. The second one could be what's the diagnosis after you have a vignette of a patient. You might have a vignette of a patient and it might ask you, 
what's the underlying pathogenesis of the disease that the patient has. So instead of just asking you straight up front what the disease is, it might actually ask you the pathogenesis. Sometimes there are questions that might also gauge your ability to provide a differential diagnosis, such as in the CTS cases where you really want to be broad. And then um, sometimes they also ask you about symptoms and associated conditions with these diseases. So for example, celiac disease is associated with um, that skin finding, dermatitis or pediformis or something like that, right? So those sorts of associations are very important um, and are some of the things that you'll be tested on. Some of the questions also have pictures. Usually the picture is helpful in diagnosis, but not necessary for diagnosis. But this is all that you would find on UWorld. Here are the things that is actually mentioned on the website for the USMLE Step 3, and this is all stuff that's directly on their website. So I'm, not, I'm literally showing you this, and it's the upfront type of question that you're going to see on the test. The first one is the single item questions. So it's going to literally show you this, and I can't tell you how many times I saw this on test day. It's literally going to give you a basic patient note that you might find in a hospital with the patient's information, history, HPI, past medical history, and it's gonna give you a bunch of stuff related to that patient. And then it's gonna ask you, which of the following is the most appropriate diagnostic study? And if you actually read this whole thing, you'll see that this is actually A, the answer here is A. And so questions like these are very common. And this was actually something that's not present on UWorld, but actually will show up on test day. So I highly recommend you think about questions in this format. And again, this question is taken directly from the USMLE website. And these are the types of questions that will ask you, what's the next step in management or what's the diagnosis? Um, you might also have multiple item set questions. And what this means is that you have two questions related to one vignette. And usually you can answer each of them um, non-exclusively. Uh, so what that means is you can answer four without answering three and you can answer three without answering four. Some questions are like this because they're based entirely on one vignette, but they are not dependent on each other. So your answer to three doesn't influence four and your answer to four doesn't necessarily influence three, but they may build off of each other, right? And so again, these questions are taken directly from the USMLE website. And again, I'm gonna link that below, but you can see how um, these findings and questions are very different than what you might have expected um, on your world. And then you might actually have sequential item sets. And this is the one that we're more used to on UWorld. And on UWorld, you have one question, and you, unless you answer that question, you can't answer the next question. And the reason for that is that the next question is dependent on the first question. So it might ask you what the next step in management is for the first question. And the second question might say, okay, so you did the MRI, now what do you do? And by telling you that you did the MRI, it's answering the question above it, which was, what is the next step in management, right? And so just things like that are really helpful to see. And this is a sequential item set that's available on their website. And you can see that this is the first question. And you would first need to answer this question related to this vignette. And once you answer that question and you've locked it in, only then will the next question show up and it will show you what this one is, which is two weeks later, you actually do this. What is now the next most important diagnostic step? And I believe it's E here is the answer, right? So Again, these are the question types that you should get used to seeing because they will show up. And I think it's really nice that the USMLE put this out because this is stuff that I wasn't as used to seeing, especially not this type of question, which I told you is actually quite dense if you think about the type of information they have here and you're expected to go through this in 90 seconds. Um, so that's, that's there. Um, let's keep going. The next question type that you will have, and again, this is not shown on UWorld, so I highly recommend you look through these types of questions. It's the drug ad format. Here, you're actually gonna get an ad for a drug, and it's gonna ask you to look through the ad, and then there's gonna be questions related to that ad. Again, this ad is taken directly from the USMLE's website, but I can't tell you how many times I saw questions like this on test day related to a drug ad. You read the drug ad, and then there's gonna be questions related to that drug ad. It's gonna ask you, it's gonna give you a vignette sometimes, and then it's gonna have you questions like these where you're gonna to have to answer them. And you're gonna to have to go refer back to the drug ad to see the types of things that you're being asked about. And again, I didn't see questions like this on UWorld and it really kind of struck me by surprise, um, but just know that these questions are fully fair game on test day. And last but not least, you will also have questions in an abstract format. What does that mean? Well, as a future doctor, they assume that you will be reading a lot of abstracts of medical papers and they expect you to be very critical about them. And this is actually where a lot of your biostats questions are gonna be coming from. 
taken directly from the USMLE website, you can see that this is a literal abstract of a damn paper and it tells you a conclusion and then it should ask you three questions related to that paper. This again is also not uncommon. You see abstract like questions, you're gonna see drug ad like questions, you're gonna see sequential questions and you're gonna see diagnostic questions and you should be ready for all of them. And the parts that cost me, the, the questions that caught me the most off guard were these sequential single item questions as well as the drug ad questions as well as the abstract questions because they were so much more dense than I was used to. So hopefully by me sharing this with you, you'll all be ready and you'll ace that part. And uh, that about brings me to the end of this. Hopefully this shows you some high yield tips, the question types. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, please drop a comment. If you have any questions, um, please like, comment, share, subscribe. It means the world to me and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.